Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we're here to talk about common phrases that ENTPs say, especially if they are Enneagram 8. And so it is, I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I am not. And so this is counterintuitive because it's the opposite than what most people think, because most people, or at least some people, want to be loved even if it's not who they are. Whereas an ENTP, especially with Enneagram 8, which is more, they are who they are, and they're a little bit more rebellious, they're going to want to be seen for who they are, even if you hate them for who they are, they'd rather be themselves than to hide that. Or actually, I will let you guys speak on behalf of yourselves. So I was wondering if you guys could share how that phrase relates to you, whatever you want to share around that. Ladies first. I was thinking as you said that, when it occurred to me was when I was like seven and a half, eight years old, when I got in trouble for something that I hadn't done, but the teacher just assumed it was me because I was talkative and kind of physical and it wouldn't be unlike me to have done that. But what struck me is that my three little friends did not tell the teacher I didn't do it. And they were trying to explain to me that they didn't want to get in trouble with the teacher. I said, yeah, but you saw that I didn't do it. And they said, well, if the teacher had asked them, they would have concurred. They would have agreed, but they were intimidated by the teacher. Now, mind you, we were probably in second grade. So it's not like you're that self-possessed in second grade. But what I will say is that the nice thing my friends were trying to do is show me that if I just pretended to be a certain way, the teacher would not blame me and that I wouldn't have that problem. And I just said, I'd rather be hated for who I am than to pretend to be who I'm not. So therefore, loved for who I'm not, it would have no meaning to me. And they were like, Whoa, they tease me about it now. But at the time, it was just so visceral in my case, not coming from my head, although it was a physical reaction to the fact, one, they hadn't stood up for me in the way that I would have wanted. And I didn't understand being intimidated by a teacher. Actually, I didn't really understand being intimidated by anybody. So there were three of them that agreed. And yet I was asserting that place or position. And I do know with the Enneagram that AIDS don't believe in love, eight and five. And the reason for that is you know that people will sell you out if they have to, if there are certain circumstances where it's required, okay, the aid even understands that. You could have someone that is your friend or that you feel is devoted to you and you would like that, but you still expect people to sell you out. So you know that even when you're a little kid, when you're an eight, but I didn't want to sell myself out. That's my story. What? Uh, yeah, I will do that. No, I, maybe I put a spin on it. I self-identify and as per, pardon me, Catherine, the expert, I am probably seven, seven, eight, two. So I have an eight in there. For me, it comes maybe from a slightly different perspective. The first time that I consciously made a decision with the wording was somebody asked me, it's maybe some popular quiz. I'm like, how can you even ask that question? Is there more than one answer? But then if I step back, it's something that, in, I mean, I also self-identify as an SX first. For me, and this might be sort of a bit of a paradox because I do value authenticity and FI is kind of my blind spot, but it's something that I associate with FI, I often appreciate in FI people. And for me, it's, I have a desire to, I float in, a, in many groups and most people might think I might be closer to them than I actually am, but I value these close connections. And a close connection for me requires authenticity. So people that I meet in, in any context, if I like you or find you interesting, male, female, whatever, I want to spend a whole day or some evening just drilling into your head. And then the morning after it's like, hey, I kind of know you, I like you. Or I don't like you. But for me, knowing is, is the essential part of connecting. Because if you really, truly connect, 
you don't want to hold a facade, right? That, that, that goes against the desire to connect. And yeah, and even if it comes at, um, oh, I don't like you, or somebody doesn't like me, I'm okay with that. So my desire is, hey, you're interesting to me. I want to be completely open with you. You're completely open with me. And nobody's perfect. I want to see the real you. Even if you're Hitler, you might be interesting. <laughs> Uh, and that just precedes of being falsely liked because the need to honestly connect is the primary driver. And where I have experienced that actually in relationship, it's just there have been, I've encountered people that they just, and actually this person happened to also suffer from something called BPD, which is, it's an emotional condition where you have different behavioral patterns that make your life difficult, but they tend to idealize you or devalue you one or the other. But in general, it's I do not like being idealized. If I'm if I'm in a relationship and I feel like, hey, what you're saying is not me. Uh, oh, I can do wrong. I want to be accepted for what I am because otherwise that's a liability of having to do a facade, to do a charade. So I'm cocky enough to say I'm likable or lovable to the right kind of person. So I want to be me. I'm not going to pretend. And if you are erring on making me into something that I'm not, I'm actually going to steer against it and say, no, that's not me. Yeah. So it's th there's no specific event as yours, unless we count this one relationship where I felt I was misunderstood and like for something I'm not. So, but it might be, I don't know if it's the eight thing, since I have eight as my secondary, it really, for me, it's probably the, the SX portion, maybe eight as well, SX portion first. I want to connect. You be you, I be me. I am not judgmental, but I'd rather be hated for what I am. As long as I think you got me and you don't like me, I can walk away. I can be romantically interested in you for whatever reasons. If I'm satisfied, I was myself. They saw me. They don't like me. Case dismissed. I can almost walk away from it because I want to be liked for who I am, right? And I'm not desperate to connect with any person because I want connection. Not that. So, I mean, that's a lot of ramble, but I don't know how is that similar for you or somewhat different because of a different stacking well the sexual is very dominant that does speak to a lot of what we're discussing because it's not real if you're not slowly revealing more of yourself then i'm not going to reveal more of myself so the sexual wants that okay you said that okay i'll tell you about this about me and we keep going and then as that energy rises and we have a twinship, even if it's only for a moment on an idea or a discussion or an event, it's that wholeness and completeness that the seven, eight and the eight, seven want. And we don't lead with a heart type. If we led with the two in your case or four in my case, we would probably feel more comfortable going into the persona, but it's in third position for us. So our persona is the area where we are less inclined to wanna be because the eight and seven kind of team up as two assertive types that wanna do what they want. You just have a better way of getting around people than I do. Having said that, I would say that yeah, it's more like if we're going to connect, it would be like the ENT's idea of buffet, of ways that we could have a discussion during an evening and or a weekend or every time I see you. I certainly know that that amplifies the eight and seven, or we could say the seven, eight and eight and seven amplify the ENTP in a certain way. And the sexual would amplify what wants to be discussed. Because yes, not all sevens are intellectual. Some of them just want the diversity and the variety and they don't need the intellectual stimulation. But with the sexual, there is a persona, but it's based on our rapport us in the moment. And that's how I experienced it. Like, are we authentic? Are we real? And sexuals want that for sure. You don't have to be four in the tri -tech. Yeah. And I find that sort of interesting because, which I 
touched on earlier, because people say FI and an ENTP is non-present, yet we would crave that authenticity. And for me, I don't, you also self-identify as an SX first, right? Do you? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I figured. Yeah, um, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and for, I don't know if you organize your world the same way, but for me, it's really, I don't mind the persona. I can pick different personas. Some I enjoy, some are just necessity to, you could say manipulation, but I can, in a certain social context, I can appear fr more friendly, close to you than I really am. But it serves a purpose, not a devious purpose, but to get along, to to deal with a person that's very different in a work context. But then I know, okay, this is facade. I'm wearing work clothes, which I don't like. I have this thing, which I call the inner circle of maybe half a dozen people. They know me, but I take comfort in the realization or knowledge. I can be myself because I like simple interfaces. I like and appreciate the essence of you. You're not perfect. There might be specific things I may say, hey, maybe that's not cool or maybe I don't agree with that. But I, I just I crave that SX, probably SX driven comfort of I can be myself. Oh, no, no facade, no charades. Yeah, it's just. It can be me. Yeah. When someone doesn't idealize you, they love you for who you are rather than this ideal romanticized version of you. And I think there is a desire in ENTPs to shatter your wishful thinking. So if you have a wishful <laughs> thought that's faulty reasoning or faulty logic, they, they want to point it out because they want to get rid of that inaccurate information about them or just about your understanding of something. So um, there's that too. And so thank you for coming out and discussing one of uh, your phrases. There is almost this desire to be understood at your core. And if they don't like your core, then you, you they can. So be it. <laughs> so be it. <laughs> yeah. Hasta la bye bye. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be hostile or angry. Yeah. It can just be not a good fit i'll yeah. go over there now <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of interesting <laughs> that was true. yeah and everyone could learn a little bit about that level of confidence and i think entps who have eight in their enneagram tri-type tend to score lower on neuroticism so i think there's also low <laughs> Morrison. My last test was zero. <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine has zero neuroticism too. That's right. <laughs> so thank you everyone for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.